She is second from the right. Well, nervous. <laughs> She's not my horse. Yeah, tells our Winterman that if she loses. This would go. be a first time. A counter strike a little bit right. He's in with the knot, and they're off. And off to a good even break with Red Zebra, Star Review, Bolt and Blue all up there. Counter strike towards the outside and Archbishop's Folly. Santa Rica tucked in on the inside there, and it's Red Zebra with Star Review running round right towards the outside. Then Bolt and Blue and Counter Strike and Archbishop's Folly. Then comes Santa Rica. Then Gerald Nurse and Tarrington Strike. Green Cake also went well up there behind them. And it's Red Zebra, Star Review, Bolt and Blue. And again, if he loses, I'll tell Zal the next time he wants to buy a horse, he can choose her himself. Eh? And he'll say he wants a new scriptwriter. How many thousands did you say you were going to get? Yeah, if you're right, she's got to win. She's going very well at the moment. And Santa Rica losing ground at this point. Santa Rica definitely losing ground as they make their way round. Come on! A trainer. I suppose he's going to be pleased having the original slow boat to China on his hand. Yes, I will when we get back home from Ireland. As soon as I've had a word with Major Bennett. He's going to see Bennett as soon as he gets back. Oh, really? It's extraordinary. Oh. What is it? One well, only has to be away literally for a couple of days to come back and mind a sea of bills leering at you. Seas do not leer. Don't quibble. I'm sure they'll hide around the corner waiting for the front door to slam and then pounce. How much did you bet on Santa Rica? Oh, uh, well, um... I mm. see. Well, you'd better stuff those in a drawer somewhere, haven't you? What a good idea for that. I'll make you an Irish coffee. Ah, you're a darling girl. There's only one thing, though. Mm hmm It's actually all for you. Oh, you'd better make it a large Irish coffee. Major Bennett's residence. It's for the Major. I'll take it. He asked for the Major. This is Cora Bennett speaking. Mr. Temple. Uh, no, I'm afraid he's not. Can I help? Well, no, not really, Mrs. Bennett. I do need to talk to him. It's about Santa Rica. She's just run appallingly badly in Ireland. Yes. Must have thought she was in a donkey derby or something. Well, I don't know. Obviously, the horse was ill. Well, I, I thought I'd ask your husband if... No, Mr. Temple. I'm afraid you can't speak to him. Yes, I, I'll tell him you phoned if I can, but you just can't see him. You just can't see him. <gasps> Mrs. Bennet? Hello, are you still there? Mrs. Bennet? That call was for the Major, wasn't it? But I forgot. He's not here, is he? Get out. 
<laughs> what happened? She rang off, I think. You think? Yes, or somebody forced her. Well, what did she say? Well, she was perfectly all right one minute, and then she suddenly got hysterical and said I couldn't see the Major. Well, that doesn't sound like Cora Bennett. No, it doesn't, doesn't it? I must say, I thought it was rather odd he wasn't at the race. What did you mean she was forced to? I think somebody took that phone out of her hand. Oh, well, I suppose the Irish coffee can wait. Yes, yes, better go down there. You're not too tired, are you, darling? Frankly, I'm exhausted. But no doubt you'll stimulate me back to life on the journey. <laughs> I sometimes wonder who writes your dialogue. Darling, <laughs> Did I hear the phone just now? Yes, it was for me. No? Who are anyone I know? No. Not unless you go in for camp dress designers. Oh, for God's sake, Cora, do you have to be so flip? Why have you suddenly started drinking so much? I like it. So do I, but not for breakfast. It also gives me a protective layer of skin. Against me? Sometimes. Oh, I'm sorry, Robert. You seem to bring out the worst in me these days. Listen, I've got some quite amusing Americans to entertain tonight. I thought of taking them out somewhere. Come with us. Oh, thank you, Cora, but no. But you'd like them, and the change would do you good. Yes, I can't. Why not? Strange as it may seem, I still enjoy your company. I, uh, I have to stay here. I, I've got some people coming to see me, business associates. Tonight? What for? Business. God, you're scintillating. Are you in some sort of trouble, Robert? Trouble? No, of course not. What do you mean? People arriving here in the middle of the night, calling at all hours. I want to know who they are. I don't question who the camp designers are who work for your business. Don't question me. Enjoy yourself. Robert. <clears throat> I know you're in some sort of trouble, in spite of what you say. I've tried to protect you once today already. Huh? Yes, from Paul Temple. Oh. He said he wanted to talk to you about a horse. Uh, yes, well, I expect but he... But I know about Paul Temple, and I wonder if that's all. Think about it. Terrific! You want to try it again? You ran right in front of the car! Yeah, but it's the rose, you see. You can't hear it coming. You want to try it again? No, some other time. Who are you? Me, Farrant. Yes, well, Mr. Farrant, I've come to see Major Bennett. Yes, well, you picked a very bad day. Mr. Temple. Yeah, well, I've got strict orders, you see. Like, no one comes in this day. Why? Big people coming up to discuss next season's racing. And you know what they say? Too many ears spoil the odds. All right, then I'd like a word with Mrs. Bennett. Who wouldn't? If only we knew the right word. Anyhow, she's not in. Mr. Farrant. You've made your point. And don't tell me to go, will you? Will you? What now, huh? No, not now. Let's see what we can get from the horse's mouth. Valent, come in here. Shut the door. So you got rid of Temple? <laughs> well, what's so amusing? That Temple, who does he think? I mean, Rose Roy's fancy wife. <laughs> He thinks all doors open to him. You damn fool. Haven't you got any sense at all? You told me no visitors. I didn't tell you to behave as if we were hiding the crown jewels. Now go on, get out. Oh, Radford? Bennett. 
You haven't answered my invitation about tonight. Why not? Now, that's not good enough, Radford. I want you here. Yes, I'd come if I were you. I mean, it's in your own interests, you understand? I'm going to talk to Harris Broadman. He's known me since my first poem. Ah, oh, sweet. You must be fair old age, then. I thought I'd broken you in once already. Sorry, darling. Granted. No, Harry works for the Major now, and I know he'll tell me whether Santa Rica was a fair buy or just a broken-down hack. Said you were broken-down oh. hack, Mr. Temple. Never. Oh. <laughs> How are you, Harry? You haven't met my wife, have you? Hello, oh. Harry. No, no, I'm not accusing you. Of course not, Harry. It's just I'd like to know about that horse. Well, she's not a champion, I never claimed that. But a good horse, yes. Good enough to win that race comfortably, hmm? Best in the field. Well, what happened in Ireland? I don't know, Mr. Temple. I just don't know. Was the Major satisfied with her during her training? Oh, as I know, he was very happy with her. He's a great trainer, the Major is. <laughs> Got his worries like the rest of us. But he wouldn't enter a horse that wasn't fit. Hey, excuse me, sir. What's that? Tells me that one of the thermostats is playing up in the stable. <laughs> a racehorse has to be coddled, you know. Drop of the food agrees, it can catch a chill. <laughs> Worse than little babies. I better go along and fix it, sir. <laughs> <coughs> Penny for them. I suppose Santa Rica was sent to Ireland in time. Hmm? Well, think back to the race, she looked so exhausted. If, if the flight was delayed... Just a minute. Harry? What about that? Is it possible? Uh, watch it. That Santa Rica wasn't flown across in proper time. Uh, just a moment, sir. Uh, ah, that's the one. When the temperature drops or rises, it triggers the alarm. Oh, uh, the flight went right as rain, as far as I could hear. There was one thing, though. Mm. Some bother down at the airfield just before the takeoff. Though what it was, I couldn't say. Do you know who could? I'd go down there if I was you. To the airfield? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, ask at the bar there. They know all the gossip in there. All right, Hallie, we'll try that. Thank yes. Mrs. Bennett. Was that Mr. Temple leaving just now? Uh, yes, sir. Hey, he was asking about Santa Rica. She ran a bad race at the colour. And what did you tell him? The truth, Mrs. Bennett. It's a good horse, been well looked after. Was he satisfied? Would you have been, ma'am? No, I suppose not. Anyway, they're going down to the airfield now. Oh? What well, for? I just happened to mention there was some bother down at the airfield the day the horses took off. Well, no doubt they'll meet the dashing Captain Harris, then. He should be a great help. You know there are no more flights this evening, sir. Oh, yes, yes, I know. No, we've just dropped in to meet somebody. Is it always this quiet here? I wouldn't really call it a busy station. Warms up a bit Mondays when the air coach takes up. <laughs> Even more so when they get back. <laughs> Amateur smugglers, eh? Sometimes, sir. Thank you. A few drunks most trips. Not always from the charter flights, either. Last weekend, some drunk drove his dirty big white Mercedes right under the nose of one of those horse faces. If you stood back. Really? Right set to there was. Some bloke shouting his head off at Major Bennett. What was it all about? Well, this bloke didn't want the horses Thank to you. go. Said the Major had no right to arrange a trip without his authority. Who was this bloke? The owner, I suppose. Anyway, in the end, Bennett just cleared off, leaving this bloke tearing a strip off the pilot. Off the pilot? What on earth for? Search me. Is he around? With the bloke? Never seen him before or since. No, no, the pilot. Oh, Captain Harris. Down in the fire hangar, I should think. 
I wonder if it's possible. What? You were right. Oh, surely not. Oh, darling. No, no, I mean about Santa Rica being so tired. I mean, maybe this man, whoever he was, successfully delayed the flight. And the and horses didn't leave until the next day. You know, one of the things I really love about you. Tell me. You never say I told you so. <laughs> Have another drink. I shan't be long. Oh, good evening. I'm looking for a Captain Harris. Is he around? Help yourself. Oh, sorry. No need. On these small airfields, we're jack of all trades. So you're the porter, the pilot, uh... the upstairs maid all in one. Tough job. Money's okay. Now then, what can I do for you? I keep my horse with Major Bennett. You fly them out for him quite often, don't you? Yes, why? And you flew some out to the Curra about two, four days ago? Yes. Well, I understand there was an incident here on the tarmac just before you left. Something about one of the owners driving his car in front of your nose and refusing to budge. No. Someone's been telling you stories, Mr. Temple. Oh, so it's not true? Well, I'd know, wouldn't I? Hello, Mr. Temple. Well, hello. I was hoping to see you. I went to the house, but it was, well, it was rather heavily defended. I'd like a word with you. You took the words out of my mouth. Oh, any news of those dresses yet? The last Met report from Brussels was lousy. You'll be lucky if you get them before tomorrow, Mrs. Bennett. Well, can I borrow the office for a moment? By all means. This way. I'm sorry to drag you in here. That's all right. Oh, do sit down. Thank you. But I, I need to speak to you alone. What about horses that don't run well in Ireland? Well, not exactly. Horses are my husband's business. Yes, yes, quite. What did the Major have to say about Santa Rica? I haven't had a chance to speak to him yet. Mrs. Bennett, your attitude on the phone this morning was... Well, it was rather strange, to say the least. I'm I was, sorry. What's the matter? Well, I was just a bit hysterical. I, I just don't want anyone to worry my husband at the moment. Why not? That's none of your business, Mr. Temple. Santa Rica is. You see, I am responsible to a friend for her training, so I think I'm justified in asking a few questions. All right. I'll see if I can answer them. When did the flight taking Santa Rica leave here? At the scheduled time. Why? It wasn't, say, oh, maybe a day late in going? No. There were five of my husband's horses running at the courier. That's all I know about it. Sorry to butt in, but I have to use the phone. Can't wait. No, 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 not for me. I'm just going. Good night. Good night. What's the matter? Don't you know? What do you mean? When you were talking to him out there, you called him Mr. Temple, and he hadn't even introduced himself. You know I can't think straight when you're around. Oh, stop fooling, will you? You don't think you went a little far? You go to the house for certain now, you realize that. Well, just let me worry about that. You can buy me a drink. Come on. Well, isn't that nice? I've got fans everywhere. Lucky you. <laughs> Captain Harris knew my name. Well, that's either very flattering or... Very sinister. Mm. Mm. He also said that there was no car under his nose, there was no shouting match, and the flight went off without a hitch. So who's lying? And why? And there was Cora Bennett. She's here? Yes, small world, isn't it? Well, what did she say? Well, repeat of what she said on the phone this morning. Leave things alone, Mr. Templeton. Leave things alone. What things? I don't know. Well, where are we going now? Bennett's place by Harry. I want to get there before Cora Bennett gets home. Oh, you stay here. You must find out something useful. Ask her to give you a lift back later on. Bye-bye. Oh, good night again. Good night. Mrs. Bennett. Hello. She's just going off and leaving you all alone. Yeah, to the oh, it happens all the time. Mysterious man he is, your husband. Yes. Mind you, he makes a terribly good living at it. Hello, Harry. Oh. Hello, <laughs> Mr. Temple. Well, do you find out anything? Harry? I think those horses didn't leave for Ireland until the next day. Well, it account for the way they all ran, see. Did all five run badly? Not all of them. One of them did well. But the rest, <laughs> I nearly curled up when I saw that afternoon telly. Could they have been nobbled? Well, you know the racing game, see. Any way of finding out? Not this end. I reckon the Major would be the one for stuff like that. Hmm. Harry, you know all the owners here, don't you? <laughs> I've been here long enough, sir. Which one drives a big white Merc? 
Well, you mean uh, Mr. Radford? Do you know anything about him? Well, you must have heard of him, sir. Radford's International. Oh, I know the name, yes. Uh, are, are you saying that he was down at that airfield? Hmm. Doing what? Well, apparently he drove his car under the nose of the freighter and said he couldn't leave without his permission. Well, that's a ramen. Why? Well, <laughs> yes, that uh, none of the horses that ran in Ireland belonged to him in the first place. <laughs> So, this is an ultimatum, is it? If you like, yes. Yeah. We're taking over, Radford. Mm. May one ask why? Well, for too long now, we've had all the risks and you've taken most of the profit. We don't like it, that's all. It's a bad system. Oh, I don't know. I think you've done pretty well, Bennett. You've got yourself a stable, a big house, an attractive wife. Nice friend. And as for you, kid, what were you and Jackson before I picked you up, eh? I'll tell you what you were. You were nothing. Dropouts from the glass house, both of you. You were nothing. So we're doing all right. But we want to do better. This way we can. What a partnership between the three of you. <laughs> It'll never work. Who's going to deal with the fresh orders? We're dealing with it now. And all because you're so damn greedy. Look, that's the way it's gonna be. You've got just 12 hours to decide. Oh, why only 12 hours? Because another delivery goes out tomorrow night. A quarter share of your out in the cold. And get it straight, Radford. We go ahead, whatever you decide. Right, Major? Right, Major? You know, you have the smell of the abattoir about you already, Bennett. Good night, Mrs. Temple. One for the road? No, thank you. Oh, Mrs. Bennet, I wonder, would you give me a lift? Oh, yes, of course. Which way are you going? Oh, I'm sorry. I should have said to your house. Paul has gone to see your husband. You must have heard something, damn it. I don't think so. He wasn't there long. He should never have got that far in the first place. Yes, well, never mind that now. The point is, what are we going to do? What do you suggest, Farrant? I think we should take care of him. Farrant thinks we should take care of him. I suppose you could manage that, eh? Me? Yes, I could make the hit. Do it. No, no, wait a minute. We don't want that kind of violence. Look, I know this bloke Temple. If he's onto something, he won't let it ride. So what do you say, Major? I... I don't know. It'll be the rest of your life in the nick. You've got no choice. No, I suppose not. Oh, all right. Take care of him. Now, get out of here, all of you. Major, I'll be in touch. Oh. Oh. Oh, Mr. Temple, oh. you feeling better now? 
I expect you could do with a drink. Come along, I'll get you one. What the hell happened? A dreadful mistake, I'm afraid. My, my man Farron mistook you for an intruder. Well, he certainly didn't take me for a friend of the family. I suppose it's understandable in the circumstances. Circumstances? Yes, well, I was an intruder. But you're a hard man to see, Major. I thought I might stand a better chance if I walked straight up to the house. Even so, I'm, I'm very sorry it happened. In fact, this is my day for apologies. Your friend's horse, Santa Rica. Very bad luck. Thank you. What happened to her? Pentothal. Novel. Yes. But the other three horses ran badly. What about them? You no, know, uh, they were all right, so it seems. That's interesting. I do hope your friend, Mr. Winterman, won't feel obliged to take his horse away from my stable. Oh, as long as I can reassure him about your stables, I can't see any need for that. Oh, I'm very relieved to hear it. Well, <laughs> Oh, Hello, darling. Ow. Darling, what's the matter? I'm afraid my man Farrant mistook your husband for an intruder, Mrs. Tanner. Are you all right, Paul? You, you yes, look. yes, I'm fine. I'm all right. Steve, apparently Santa Rica was drugged. Drugged? Mm. Is this true? Yes, I'm afraid so. Oh, God knows who, some damn betting ring or other. The sport of kings doesn't seem to be your scene, Mr. Temple. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, there's only one thing to do when you fall off, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're quite right there. Oh, and by the way, your own horse is ready for a trial run, if you're, if you're agreeable. Well, fine, if she's fit. Ireland again? Yes, this Saturday. Well, whatever you say, Major. I'm afraid I won't be able to get across to see her run, though. Oh, pity. Well, let's hope she does better than Santa Rica. Much better. <laughs> yes, Come on, Paul, let's get you. All right. And my apologies once again. Oh, don't worry about it. Good night, Mr. Good night. Good night. You want to try? Got back early? Yes, my dinner date was cancelled. Well, what did you do instead? I was working. In your studio? Yes. And is that where you met Mrs. Temple? I met her in the pub. We went for a drink together. How did your meeting go? Who was here? Mm. Well, I told you it was business. With some of the owners? Yes, there was one. Who? Hey, look, it's been a long day. I... I think I'll go and turn it. The busy Bennets always manage to meet at the end of the day to discuss the day's events. End quote. Oh, Cora, for Oh, God's good second. night. You live in the stables, Farrant, not here. How did you know it was me? Or was it just wishful thinking? I could smell you. What do you want? A drink. Well, have it and go. You're a touch frightened of me, aren't you? Don't flatter yourself. Silly. I mean, I wish you weren't. I mean, I'm not frightened of you. I just think you're terribly, terribly dispensable. Yes, well, your husband doesn't think so. He needs me. Needs you? Why? Do you have some sort of secret gift or something? He needs someone loyal. Someone strong. And you're that? You're a phony. You add up to nothing. Please do not underestimate me. Still, I suppose you're cheaper than an Alsatian. Well, you're very funny with your little jokes and things, aren't you? Well, I'll just have to surprise you, won't I? Not me, Farrant. Go and play your games with someone else. I intend to. Only they are not games. What do you mean? Very soon, very, very soon, you are going to see the real Tom Farrant. The ex-mercenary? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who? You. You'll find out. Tom, tell me. Tell me, Tom. God, I hate you. But Agent Bennett doesn't explain anything, really. Not to my satisfaction, no. Well, there's nothing to stop you withdrawing the horses and taking them to another state. No, nothing at all. Except for one thing. What's that? You're hooked. Oh, well, do you blame me? I don't know. Farrant gives an absurd neurotic performance. A pilot I've never met knows my name. Four horses drag the heels of the colour, but only one is drugged. And Cora Bennett begs me to stay clear. Of what and why? Oh. 
Hello? Bang on cue. Hmm? Oh. Hello, Paul Temple. Mr. Temple, I have to see you tomorrow morning. Please. Look, can you come down to my studio? It, yes, it's in part of the stables my husband doesn't use. No, no, I can't tell you what it's about, not now. Yes, please come early. Goodbye. Well, well, well. Got yourself a date? Or an invitation? Or both. <laughs> oh, what did you find out in those articles? Oh, only a short news item. Listen to this. Jack Radford, 43, whose rapidly expanding electronics firm Radford International already straddles the common market barrier, today announced he would be opening two new factories in Eindhoven and West Berlin to add to those already in full production in Brussels and Lille. Any help? It might be, yes. Now, he was the man who drove his Mercedes in front of the freighter. Yes, he was also at that meeting at Bennett's house tonight. I don't know what that was about. Well, one thing I know now, it wasn't about horses. Sorry to bring you all the way down here, all but right. you understand I couldn't speak to you at the house. What was so urgent? I asked you last night, Mr. Temple, to stop inquiries. Oh, no. Surely you didn't bring me all the way down here just to tell me that. No, I, I think you're in danger. Really? Who from? Look, Farron didn't just mistake you for an intruder last night. <laughs> I'm very glad to hear it, in a way. Why? Well, if that's the way they treat all visitors to your house, your milkman must have a pretty hair-raising time of it. Please, I'm trying to help you. Look, I don't know what it was about, but there was some sort of a meeting at the house last night. I rather gathered that just before Mr. I was... Mr. Temple, you don't know what it was about, do you? I mean, whilst you were there listening, you didn't hear anything that might give us a clue or recognise any of the people. Farron didn't really give me time for taking notes. You didn't hear any names? No, I'm afraid I didn't. Oh, well, that's that, then. You, uh, you said a moment ago that I was in danger. Farrant, I think he's trying to kill you. I mean, this was just a practice run. Listen to me. I, I'm serious. I overheard him on the phone last night. Keep out of his way, Mr. Temple. Did you hear how or when? No. No, I didn't. Well, thank you. I'll be careful. Just a moment. My husband has nothing to do with any of this, I promise you.
Yes, this device is identical to the one in Farron's car, only that was used to trigger off a capsule of cyanide gas. Well, how did it work? Well, simple. Heat from the engine set it off. But who'd want to do a thing like that? And why? You missing any of those from the stables? Oh, I wouldn't know, sir. There'll be good dozens of them here. Well, thanks, Harry. Keep your eyes open. Will you? Anything unusual, you know my number. Oh, uh, Mr. Temple, yeah? do you know your own horse is entered for a race this week? Some cloud? Yeah. Yeah. She ready? Oh, for my money she is. Major thinks so too. When's she leaving? Uh, tonight, sir, with another horse. Are you driving the horses to the airport? <laughs> no, sir. The Major gave me the evening off. It's not your usual night off, is it? No, I don't understand it. But I think I stay here all the same, Mr. Temple, just to keep an eye on things. No, no, Harry, you take the night off. Now, now look, sir. I got you mixed up in all this. It's my responsibility. Forget it, Harry. You stay away from the stables tonight. Mr. Go out and have a jar or two, hmm? If you say so, sir. Well, that's a very impressive start, Bennett. Your first day's operation, and already you call down a man like Temple on your trail. Farrant would have dealt with him. Well, Farrant's dead, isn't he? And that was no accident. Really? Well, that must be very worrying for you. What do you mean? Well, it looks like someone's trying to muscle in on you. Well, what are we going to do? We, Bennett? We? Well, you, surely. You've taken over. You're the boss now, aren't you? Yes, but you... Listen, Bennett. I'll let you into a little secret. Didn't it occur to your ex-military-sized brain last night that I relinquish control of these operations rather too readily? Well, didn't it? You know me. It was out of character, wasn't it? What are you trying to say? This whole thing's a lot bigger than I've ever let you know. And for very special reasons, you've been given kid glove treatment so far. Well, it stops here. Either you call off this trip or you're finished, Bennett. But if you go ahead, my friend, it'll be the last trip you make. Look, Paul, now Farron's dead and the police are in on this, why not leave it to them? No, because everything points to the fact that I was invited into this situation. Thank you, darling. And if I've got a part to play, I'm going to play it through right to the end. Tell me something I don't know. Like, where does Major Bennett put it? I think I've got a very good idea, as a matter of fact. Oh? Yes, it was that article you read me about Radford that did it. Hello, Paul Temple. Harry, what's the matter? Look, sir. I've seen what's going on. Can you get down here right away? What happened? Let's get down there, Steve. We can call it off tonight. It's not too late. We're too deep in. Oh, well, we can still call Radford. Don't be a fool, Benny. This was your idea. A bigger slice of the profits, remember? Yes, I remember. But first of all, Farrant, and now this. The whole thing's getting out of hand. We'll say it for you. You go ahead.
What's the matter, darling? It's Harry. He's dead. Good afternoon, Major. And a very good afternoon to you. <coughs> One of them's a bit restless, young horse, not used to all this fuss. That's all right then, sir. I think we know you by now. Just off? The horses, I mean. And Sun Cloud with a very good chance of winning. No, I'm afraid not. No chance at all. Which is a damn good filly. Yes. But I've decided not to race her in Ireland after all. But you said she should run. I'm a worrying you, Bennett. About to spoil things for you, aren't I? I uh, I don't understand. No, nor did I. Not for a long time. And then... How many horses are you taking across? Look, what the devil are you up to? Just two. Sun Cloud and one other, is that right? Look, they've been checked, for God's sake. Ah. Put that down. I wouldn't. Now, you see? <laughs> when I turn it down... There are no horses at all. Would you mind opening the back, please, sir? Uh, I'll just get the key. Well done, darling. I wonder what sort of blood sports you'd need an FLN service rifle for. It occurred to me this might be the answer. Robert, I still can't believe it. And did he... Why was Farrant killed? Farrant was killed because somebody didn't want me killed. What? Well, not that anybody was concerned about my welfare. It was just that the timing wasn't quite right. I hadn't finished my investigation. I don't understand. You see, arms went across by air to Ireland, while the horses went by sea and road. What happened to the arms once they reached Ireland? Well, that's anybody's guess, darling. Poor Robert. I can't help feeling sorry for him. Yes. Poor Robert. He was the sacrificial lamb, cut up into little pieces and fed into the jaws of justice by... By who? Well, he was a greedy man, Cora, but he was unsuited to the politics of high crime, and that's what this was. How do you mean? I mean that he was a small fish in a big sea. He didn't stand a chance against the sharks. You see, Paul's interest was deliberately stimulated in order to prove your husband's guilt. Unfortunately for the sharks, the bait turned round and bit them. Oh, that'll be my hire car. I almost forgot. I, I'd arranged to take some clothes down to the prison for Robert. Oh. You'll excuse me now. Well, I'll carry it for you. Oh, no, it's quite... No, no, I insist. No, wait a minute. What the hell do you Shall think you're now. doing? Funny old prison. Your high car's very insistent, isn't it? All right, then. I'm going away for a few days. There's nothing wrong in that, is there? Flying off with Captain Harris, perhaps. Well, that's my business. Well, now I intend to make it my business. Sit down. You can't keep me here indefinitely. I'm not going to have to for very much longer. We're just going to sit here and wait. Very, very quietly, Mrs. Bennett.
chauffeur with a key. That's what I'm for you. Cora, come on, darling. Well, what the hell's keeping you? What's you, Tim? It's no good, Jack. They know. I see. No, I wouldn't, Radford. Now, so far, the murders haven't been your handiwork, only on your instruction. That is right, isn't it, Cora? It's a lie. Radford International make a very interesting range of products, don't they? From thermostats to, uh, well, what shall we call them? Phantom horses? What does that prove? And a dainty set of fingerprints on Farron's car. No, Jack, wait! It's hardly worth the effort, Radford. Do you know, Cora, I do believe he was going to leave you behind. But I think you'll both go together. Hmm? <laughs>